Under one such marker lies a young man, Martin Triptal, who left his job in a small town barbershop in 1917 to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division. There, on the Western Front, he was killed, trying to carry a message between battalions under heavy fire. We're told that on his body was found a diary. On the flyleaf under the heading, My Pledge, he had written these words. America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure, I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and the moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. The crisis we are facing today does not require of us the kind of sacrifice that Martin Triptow and so many thousands of others were called upon to make. It does require, however, our best effort and our willingness to believe in ourselves and to believe in our capacity to perform great deeds, to believe that together, with God's help, we can and will resolve the problems which now confront us. And after all, why shouldn't we believe that? We are Americans. Let those words sink in as 30 years later, Ronald Reagan's message is as relevant today than it ever has been. With the coronavirus pandemic raging on, we need these types of messages to be out there and to hit home with people. So I hope that this video, this message, either enlightens, encourages, or enforces each of our individual beliefs today. So I hope it enlightens those who are sitting there still dismiss, uh, dismissing this as a real disease or not a big deal or just the flu or, hey, there's nothing I can do with it. I'm just going to live my life. We all can do something. And not only can we do it, but at this point, we must do it. So to those people with that thought process, I urge you to change today. If not for yourself, for your family, for humanity, it is that important at this point. I hope that this message can encourage those of us who have come around to the idea that this is a serious problem. So if a month ago you thought, Hey, not a big deal. And as the facts and the numbers and the doctors and the experts started to weigh in and reveal the situation at hand, you changed your mind. I want to encourage you that you have done the right thing and to continue to do the right thing. And that we all need to unify and do our part. I also hope this message enforces the beliefs that they are doing the right thing and their work is that of something otherworldly at this point. And I'm talking about those who are on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the cops, the emergency crews, the truckers, the grocery store workers the private companies chipping in, the citizens sewing masks, dropping off supplies, doing what they can in their capacity to help, donating money, the military pulling up the ships to be hospitals for always protecting us not just from, obviously, the coronavirus, but in general, 
and sacrificing their lives on a daily basis. So I hope this message enforces to all of you that what you are doing for us is what has built America and to keep going. And we all, not as Republicans, not as Democrats, not as black, not as white, not as Chinese, all of us as Americans, free will Americans, will support them and lift those people up when they need it. That is the least we all can do. The bottom line, this is now a war. It's not a clear enemy. It's not a person. It's not a country. But this is a war. We have a fight on our hands. So it is either going to take us out or we are going to defeat it. And if we all do what we can and unify as one nation under God, we will for sure lose some battles. We will lose people. There will be damage done as no war spares every soul. But we will win the war and move America forward because no enemy can withstand the power of Americans when we, the people, unify. For those of you who are scared, panicked, broken spiritually, financially, feeling defeated and hopeless right now, I and we need you. It is hard for everyone, some much harder than others, but we all need you to not give up. You are as important in this as anyone else. We all play a role in defeating this. And you need to know that your role is important. So maybe you're not a doctor. Maybe you just got laid off and had no money to begin with to spare, to donate to the cause. Maybe you don't know how to sew a mask. Maybe you don't have a car to drop off supplies. Maybe you are paralyzed by fear and depression right now, and you literally feel that as much as you want to, you can't help. We need you to know you can and have to help. So whatever it is you can do, whatever you can think of to help, start today. Start right now. Whether it's as simple as calling a friend and checking in on them. Whether it's as simple as not complaining, not bringing negativity out into the world. If it's just simply following the rules and staying inside and doing nothing else. Whatever you can do, I promise you the momentum of service will empower you and it will give you the ability to start fighting back and regaining hope and shifting the tides in all of our favor against COVID-19. We all need something to believe in and we all need to start believing in the same thing. So whatever your views were a month ago, two days ago, two weeks ago, Whatever political party you align with, doesn't matter anymore. Now it's about us. And if we can unify and truly get on the same page, I don't care what the obstacle is. There is no defeating us at that point. And we need to understand that. So if you're sitting there and you do not believe in the government, in the world, or anything else for that matter, I ask you, all of you, as Americans, as family at this point, we're all connected now, to at least begin to believe in the power of hope and united action. If you do not believe me, I will end this paraphrasing a speech given by U.S. Navy Admiral William McRaven. He gave this speech years ago. 
And basically, it was about the power we have as individuals to unify people, give people hope, and what that can do to change the world, starting with just one person. He gave this address at a college commencement speech, University of Texas. And that is a time of happiness. Kids graduated, they're about to get into their, the real world, they've accomplished what they've worked so hard for up to that point. And the Admiral still felt the need and the importance of this concept and message. So during these times, these horrible times that we are in, consider this a blessing and a blueprint of what we all need to do and believe. So I'm going to paraphrase this as best as I can remember it. He basically starts the speech and he tells the class, graduating class, if you want to change the world, start by making your bed. Sounds silly, sounds simple. But the point is, you want to accomplish the first task of the day. And that will give you some pride. It will encourage you then to continue to do and look for things to accomplish. And it will also give you the idea that no matter how bad your day is, when you get home, your bed is still made. And that is better than coming home to an unmade bed. And when you get in that bed and it's made and it's comfortable, it will give you some hope that maybe tomorrow will be better. And the little things matter. So what I was mentioning before, about whatever stage you're at in this fight, we're all in the fight now. Even if it's the smallest thing, even if you personally don't think it is making a difference, it is. And you need to believe that. And for every little thing that you do and she does and he does will add up and start to stack and compound. And that is what will win. We can't beat this by ourselves. We all need to be together. Then he goes into a story about basically Navy SEAL training and the program that they put the SEALs through in order to graduate and become a Navy SEAL. If you're familiar with SEALs and never watched any movies or documentaries about it, you've probably heard of this and how rigorous and tough it is, not only physically but mentally. And the idea of the program is they want to weed out the weak. They want to get rid of the people who they can't count on. So one of the things they have them do is a swim. You know, Navy SEALs, land, sea, you know, everything. They need to be equipped in all facets. And they have to swim through waters that are known to be shark infested. So the day before the swim, they brief all the students on the different species of sharks giving them awareness that, yes, there are sharks in the water. They then, you know, ensure that nobody's ever been killed by a shark doing this swim. Doesn't mean they're not out there, but nobody's ever been killed. But they are out there. So if you see a shark and he's coming at you, don't swim away. Stand in place, swim in place, muster all your strength, and when it gets close to you, you punch it as hard as you can in the nose. It will swim away, and you will survive. The point of that is 
not to scare the cadets that they're sharks or give them some otherworldly information on how to defeat a shark. It's the idea that there are a lot of sharks out there in the world. Whether you've encountered them at this point or not, you will eventually. And right now, with this disease, we got a big shark that's coming after all of us. So the point is, we can't run and duck our heads in the sand and hope that basically it just goes away, you know, tomorrow. We need to do something. We need to fight. Because if you swim away from a shark, guess what? It's going to get you. If you stand there and fight it and do what you can do, you got a chance. And help any of us would take a chance over sure defeat any day of the week. So let's give ourselves right now a chance. Stay inside. Stay away from people. Sanitize. Wash your groceries when they come from Peapot. Encourage people. Check up on people. Save the negativity for later. Keep the message of hope and prosperity and moving forward alive. Don't fight that. Don't be afraid of the sharks. Then his, one of his next stories, he talks about one of the boat crews. And basically in SEAL training, you know, they do a lot of drills and races, you know, with boats running and swimming and then paddling, carrying the boats and paddling them out. And they compete. And there's different boat crews and their teams. And those teams stay together. So when he was there, he was part of one team that would be considered, in today's standards, alpha males. They were big, muscular, strong. They looked the part. They were loud. They were aggressive. They were intimidating. They were the guys, when you looked at them, you said, that looks like a Navy SEAL. That was one team, the team he was a part of. Then they had another team that was a little unusual. They were a bunch of small guys. Kind of a ragtag bunch. They were from all over the place. Two kids, he said, were from the Midwest. One kid was Greek. Another kid was uh, Mexican. Point is, they were all from different creeds. And they were all kind of the underdogs. And in situations where you have groups together for long periods whether that's a sports team, the SEALs, class, people joke around. People comment. Whether it's right or wrong, it happens. So his group would always rag on the small guys about how small they were. And one of the things they all ragged on was before every swim, the little guys, the mini boat crew, they called them, would put these small flippers on their feet. And they would get made fun of for it. Why are you bothering doing that? Waste of time. What he soon found out was a very important lesson in his life, as he says. Because that mini boat crew, they dominated. They won every race. They could not be defeated. And there was two reasons for that and two important lessons he learned. One, those little flippers, them paying attention to a small detail that other people might seem as meaningless, that gave them the advantage and edge and helped them. So again, back to coronavirus. The small stuff matters. I'll say that again. It matters. Every one of us. It matters. Do your part. Pay attention to the details. We have ran out of time to be experimenting and messing around. The other lesson that that boat crew taught him was basically 
the SEAL team, that experience, and adversity was a great equalizer. Because nothing mattered. Nothing mattered in that scenario in terms of winning or losing and surviving and getting through other than the will and the desire to succeed. Those little guys had the biggest hearts. And he makes a joke in there. It says, I learned never to judge a man by what he looks like. Judge a man by the size of his heart and the size of his flippers. And that is important right now. Because this is a war. This is a win and lose, a dire situation with severe consequences. So we need that will to succeed. If you wake up and you say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to really follow the rules. I'm bored. I ran out of Netflix shows. I want to see my buddies. My kids are annoying me, so yeah, they could go ride their bikes. Oh, I'm going to trust my teenager. They said they want to take the car and go get a milkshake. I'm going to trust them that they're not picking up five of their friends who they haven't seen. We cannot allow that to happen. So you need to wake up. And put it as severely as this. You need a will to win. A desire to win and beat this. Whether it's for you, your neighbor, your grandmother, society. We all inside of us need that will. We need the will to fight and not give up. The last story he gives is about Hell Week, which, again, if you've ever paid attention to any SEAL stuff, you've probably heard of this. If you've ever played a sport or tried out, in tryouts normally there's a Hell Week, and basically it's designed to break you. Weed out the week once and for all. So no level of talent, intelligence, passion, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is will and desire and heart. Because for Hell Week, it's six days. They get literally no sleep. They are physically and mentally harassed by the instructors whose job is to make these guys quit and tap. Because just like in the coronavirus situation, there's dire consequences if people slip up and slack, the Navy SEALs, the military, your team is what you rely on to keep you alive. You have to trust those individuals. So if the kitchen gets hot and you can't handle it, they need to know now. So it might seem harsh, especially in this PC world and You know, everybody's a winner world. There, only the strongest survive. And that needs to be the case. So he gives a story about one particular day that they do in Hell Week for every class. And what they do is they head out to Mud Flats, which is an area between San Diego and Tijuana. And it's where water runs off. And basically, it creates mud. And it's called the Tijuana Sloughs. And it's a swampy, damp area of terrain where basically the mud will engulf you. So they bring the class there. They have them paddle out to the mud flats. And basically the goal is to try and endure 15 hours of freezing cold mud engulfing you ungodly winds and the presence and persistent pressure from these instructors to break you and make you quit. So as he's telling this story, he gets to the point where basically the sun is starting to set. And at that point, they've been out there hours already, but still nowhere close to 
being done with. And the mud has now engulfed every one of them until basically the only thing you could see was their head. And sun's setting. It's only getting colder. And basically the instructors told them all, hey, we can leave. This could be over with if five of you agree to quit. I think he was in a group of about 20, 25 guys. So if five agreed to quit and said, I can't take this anymore, everybody could leave. So as he says, he was looking around, and it was very clear that some guys, they were ready to quit. They wanted to quit. There was eight more hours to go. The chattering teeth and the moans from shivering at that point honestly made it hard to even hear the instructors barking at them. You could only imagine that feeling. Now, at this point, a voice raises up. One voice, and it echoed through all of the moaning and the chattering of the teeth. And it started singing a song. And as he says, an out of tune song. But that one voice became two. And then that two became three. And eventually, every man out there engulfed in the mud was singing. The instructors then began threatening them, saying, if you don't stop singing, we're adding more hours onto this. But they didn't stop singing. They kept singing. Somehow, he says, the mud felt warmer. The wind was tamer. And the dawn didn't seem so far away. He then finishes that story by saying, if he has learned one thing, anything, in all of his time and experience across the globe, it is the power of hope and the power of just one person to change the world by giving people hope. So if you want to change the world, which we all should right now, we all should be aligned that we need to defeat this virus and save fellow Americans, save ourselves, save humanity possibly. It takes one of us, two of us, three of us, and as more and more people start to align and unify and put the bullshit aside for a little bit and have a common theme, we can change this. We can win. So the Admiral, he ends the commencement by saying, if we all do this, we will leave the world far better than what it is today. And what we did here and started will indeed change the world. That message rings clear. We can do this. We can change the fortunes of the world. But it's going to take action. It's going to take every single person to be in the same team. You hate Trump. You love Trump. You're a Republican. You're a Democrat. You're a liberal. You're a conservative. You believe in this. You believe in that. Put it all aside. There is one enemy, one goal, focus, act, and we can change this. And we can put a stop to this. And all of our lives can get back to normal. If you are out there and you are struggling, ask for help. If someone asks you for help, help them. If you see somebody struggling and they're too proud to ask for help, help them. Don't judge people. Help them. That business owner who's scared to shut his business down and he still wants to go in, 
Some of them, maybe they're just greedy. But a lot of them, I can promise you, they're worried about their futures. They're worried about their families. Don't judge them. Help them. Help them realize. And nobody has ever influenced or helped anybody with negativity. Because the second that negativity comes in and pointing fingers and blaming him or her or this or that, that is when the message is no longer important. And that person who you're trying to get through to will shut you off. That's not the way to go about it. The way to go about it is to help. You do that, I promise you more people will listen. And at this point, we need far more people listening who haven't paid attention yet. We need the people who have come around and paying attention to do a little more and build off of what they've already started. So good, you stayed home, you're isolated, you're all right. You're still getting a check from work. Hey, maybe donate a little bit of that money. Maybe take some of the toilet paper in your house and drop it off to your neighbor who you know is a cop who's working 12 hours a day and he can't basically have time because he needs to sleep a couple hours before he goes back to work to go shopping for himself. Do those things. Build off of that. And again, the people who are on the front lines, the true heroes in this, and at the end of the day, we're going to lose some of them. And like any war, soldiers are lost. And those people are the soldiers right now. We need to support them the most. Whatever we can do. And again, doctors, nurses, that's you know the main thing. But there's a lot of other people who are essential right now. Grocery store workers who are stocking the shelves, working all night long to make sure the toilet paper's back on the shelves because some guy bought 7,000 rolls to sell it on eBay. They're there. They're endangering themselves. And trust me, they don't get paid millions of dollars. They don't get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it. They're working there because they have to in general in life. And at this point, some of them went home. That's fine. But then there's some who stand and are literally sacrificing themselves for the betterment of society. Some are doing it because, you know what? They feel that they have no money. What's the point? But a lot of them, they're doing it because they're American. They were taught by their fathers, grandfathers, families that, you know what? When it comes time to serve, you put your own ego and agenda and your wants down. And you do what is right for everyone. And that will make you feel far better than any amount of money you can make, any business you start, anything. That idea of being a patriot and helping your community, your society, that will be the best feeling you can ever receive. I promise you that. Ask anybody who's rich, anybody who's made it. Money comes and goes. Vestments work out. They don't work out. It's that process and the stories that they have of the people they help, the guys they talk to who are down and out. And you know what? Maybe they gave them some throwaway advice, passing by. Maybe they did a speech somewhere. And somebody, one person in that group took it and they really ran with it. And it changed their life. And then that person success change other people's lives and the spiral continues so what we need to do is we all need to change even if you're doing the right thing do more do better and i promise you we will win we will defeat this like reagan said why shouldn't we believe that we are americans we have won. We've had situations. We've had wars. We've had terroristic attacks. We've had plenty of things go wrong. We can overcome it. 
but it's not going to just happen because we closed our eyes, woke up, and, oh, now everything's fine. This is going to take effort from every one of us, and if every one of us put the effort in, we're all going to be fine. You got to know that. So now it's on us. You know, We could do this, but what I really want to drive home here is – Let's not stop this belief that I'm talking about when coronavirus is actually finally behind us. Let's say everybody gets on the same page. We unify. We're a group. We're strong. We beat it. Life goes back to normal. People get back to work. The economy does all right. Let's not forget these principles. Because quite honestly, if we continue with these principles that we learn in times of tragedy, which unfortunately tragedy sometimes brings out the worst in people, but it also brings out the best in people. And we've seen that time and time again. And then all of a sudden it goes away. Because people are like, eh, let's keep it this time, all of us. So you want the world to change? Change it one step at a time, one individual at a time. And you're not going to change it with negativity. You're not going to change it with complaining. You're not going to change it with anything besides the power and the message of hope and that we believe in you. We're here for you. And better days are to come. So I really want to take this travesty, this awful situation that we are all in, and not only defeat it, but continue the momentum. So in 100 years, as our future generations read about the coronavirus in a history book, just like the Spanish flu and the Black Plague, the message will not be of tragedy. Sure, we're going to lose people. There will be tragedy in this. But the overall message, at the end of the day, will be a message that That was the moment in history. 2020, 100 years ago, was the point when Americans truly and finally all unified for the common good and changed the course of history for the better. God bless America.